week one, we overreacted. Now, in week mm-hmm. two, it's time to break out the hot seat, Alex. Four mm-hmm. coaches, four up. very, very hot chairs they are sitting on. Now, we just have to ask, should these coaches be fired? The first coach is the illustrious Dan Quinn of the Atlanta Falcons, perennial choker. Like, just not good. Does Dan Quinn deserve to be fired, or when will he be fired by? I don't understand how this guy's been able to keep his job over the last couple of years. I mean, I think his biggest asset as a coach is he almost just kind of makes people feel bad for him. <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone's kind of just like, gosh, like Dan Quinn's got a got it rough right now. He, he lost twenty eight to three in the Super, or he, he squandered a twenty eight to three lead in the Super Bowl. In the game that you know, they should just ran the football. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he had this 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 monumental collapse in the fourth quarter against the Cowboys, and you just almost like feel bad for the guy, and it's like I don't want to fire him. He's probably got it, you know, rough as it is. <laughs> but I think it is time. I think it's, you, you know, it it's gone on long enough that you're wasting Julio Jones's, Matt Ryan's, and now even Calvin Ridley's prime years. I mean, their offense is freaking elite. And they do not have anything to show for it right now besides a Super Bowl loss and nothing else the last couple of years. have just been so underwhelming. It's time to change something at the helm. It's time to bring in an actual defensive coach, not Dan Quinn, who's a fake defensive coach, but someone who actually has some defensive prowess and maybe give Matt Ryan and the offense some help. My thing about Dan Quinn, it's like, I'll give you the analogy. It's like pulling the goalie in hockey. Yeah. It's So sometimes... It's not necessarily the goalie's fault that he's having a mm-hmm. bad night. Sometimes you get the bad bounces. You just get a really good offense in front of you. Like we saw in Game 2 watching Dallas Stars, and, um, just their goalie just get picked apart by that um, power play of, of the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're just moving the puck, putting the goalie in really bad situations. And But, you know, the goalie does have some blame, definitely has some blame. And a lot of times when you pull the goalie, it's it's because he's not having the best game. But also sometimes you just need a change of pace. Dan Quinn needs to be taken, fired from his job, not because he's a bad head coach. He's a decent coach. He does have this big flaw of blowing these huge leads, which is obviously a big problem. But at the same time, I believe the organization, the Atlanta Falcons, just needs a change in culture. It's like having Ron yep. Rivera come up. To, to the Washington football team. They need to change the culture. They need to change something, and that starts with your head coach. It's not necessarily his fault. He plays a role, but his time in, in the line is done. It's over. I, I think it. I think it's time for Dan Quinn to be relieved of his duties. I think he Atlanta. does make it to the end of the season, though. I yeah, think I does. think he does, too, but I think next year he needs to be reunited with the Seahawks defense, maybe try to turn that defense around. I think he is one of those good coordinator, bad head coaches kind of guys. Mm-hmm. And that's you know, not a bad thing to be though. There's it's no, not, shame it's really that. not, but it's There's almost no like you got to stay in your lane almost. And you got to realize like, what your strengths and weaknesses are like McDaniels. Like, like we just talked yeah. about. So, Agreed. It works. Next coach is another perennial choker and a lot more of a loser though. Matt, Patricia, as you <laughs> mentioned, you gave us, you gave us the numbers. Oh my gosh. You know, it's just so you, bad. You, it's all about pedigree, you know. There's a lot of coaches that come from Alabama because they were under Nick Saban. They be put in the NFL or some other places around college football. Pat Patricia, defensive coordinator for the Patriots dynasty, working under the greatest coach of all time, Bill Belichick. He comes to um, Detroit. He pretty much reincarnates the Patriots defense over there in, in Detroit. And what does he have to show for it? About nothing. About uh, it's nine wins. Nine wins. In three years. In 30, ridiculous. And blown nine wins in 34 games. games. In blown games. Matt really Patricia really is not making it through the end of the season. I'd be surprised if he makes it another two weeks. Nine wins and a tie. I apologize. I did not give him credit for the tie last, last year. Week because one. it's not a win, but it's not a loss. <laughs> Definitely not a loss. And, you know, honestly, at this point, a tie would be a... <laughs> addition on Matt Patricia's resume. It'd be improved. Which is, gosh, man. I mean, this is one of those things where it just, it doesn't look like he knows what's going on in the sideline. It doesn't look like he has any control of the team. Matt Stafford is more of a head coach than Matt Patricia is at this point. You feel bad for Matt Stafford. You feel bad, you know, like you said, for all these guys that just got drafted to the Lions. But 
it just it's, there's not a lot looking up for this franchise and Matt Patricia is the head of it he needs to be held accountable needs to be a new coach mm-hmm. by the end of this year I say he doesn't make another three weeks um, I hope you're right the next one that also he will not make another three weeks oh gosh, I don't want to talk about this guy too much but okay let's talk oh about the guy that gosh. Adam Gase the, the career ruiner I blame Adam Gase for the turf it's his fault. He ruined yeah. the turf. I think he installed it all himself. Well, if you want to talk about anything that he installs offensively, doesn't work. <laughs> Adam Gase, there's not much to say about him. There's no case to make about him. Adam Gase is ruining Sam Darnold. He's fire him. He should have been fired two weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, there's... There's not many positives to say about the guy from a coaching standpoint, from a personality standpoint. There's literally nothing. I mean, here, here's the one good thing you can say about Adam Gase. Okay. He coached with Peyton Manning, and that is the only thing that he has in his resume, and it's gotten him two head coaching jobs, and it's ruined two quarterbacks. I mean, we talked about it last week. I don't think Sam Brown's the quarterback, but he's ruined two quarterbacks. He that hasn't had a chance. In like, he might not be a good quarterback, players. but certainly he's not going to get any better with that case. Agreed. It's just this guy needs to be fired yesterday, and I don't think it's going to be too much longer before this guy's head is on a stake in New York. And speaking of heads on stakes, Houston fans, oh boy. Well, talking about – we, me and uh, in our UFC correspondent Blake, he actually joined us for some NFL content. We were breaking down the NFL draft. It what well, feels like a year ago, but mm-hmm. from there we had a video that I put up on YouTube called "Fire Bill O'Brien," and that is the second most watched, vi- um, the second highest viewed video in our show's history. It's still getting like over the last two weeks. It still is just racking up the views, which is. <laughs> It's a testament that people are still looking up the phrase "fire Bill O'Brien." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on and, YouTube. And actually, this is this is going to surprise you a little bit, but I think out of the four coaches here, I think Bill O'Brien has the one case where you don't have to hit the panic button quite yet. No, because look, let's look at this. I mean, here's the draw that Bill O'Brien got the first two weeks of the year. You, you have an absolutely heartbreaking loss in the playoffs last year where you had a 24 to nothing lead mm-hmm. with one of the top five quarterbacks in the league. You just signed a massive extension and you just absolutely blow it to a chiefs team. That's just better than you in almost every facet, but they had a 24 point lead. You thought that would have got counted for something. You would have, but think, you would think week one, week two, you get put on Thursday night, opening night against the chiefs against a team. You just got blown out by then you have to go against the Baltimore Ravens, so I think are the best team in the NFL, and I don't think it's close. No. And I think this is one of those situations where we don't know yet if this Texans team is bad because of the teams they've played, and they very might well be a bad team going forward, but you cannot write the book on them quite yet because of the teams that they've played and because of the hand that they've been dealt. And Bill O'Brien's had success over the last couple of years. He's won divisions. He's got a good track record. He's got a winnable division still, even with the Titans being 2-0. They still are not out of this thing. It's not like they're going to run away with this division. No. So Bill O'Brien, where I think he should be stripped of his GM duties because he clearly does not have any grasp on the value of players and the value of draft picks. Mm-hmm. But as a coach, he's not the worst he could do. You took the words right out of my mouth with there. I think he's is he's an, he's not a good head coach, but he is an – I'll call him an acceptable head coach. Yeah. He can fill in for a spot and He's be, a replacement level head coach. He he he's not gonna light the world on fire. He will be average. But we've seen his ability as a GM and oh boy is it not good. It's and not it's- good. It's a hot dumpster fire with with his GM abilities. No, there's almost no reason you should ever have the head coach as your GM, no matter how good of a head coach he is. You just don't do it. It's a separate job. It's two different jobs. You need two different people for that. Or Except Bill Belichick. Okay. The one exception <laughs> is the greatest coach of all time. I'm okay with that being the exception. <laughs> it, but Bill O'Brien is not in that class of no, coach. I promise Bill you. Bill O'Brien is not even close to Bill Belichick. No. No, 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 no. No. 
Um, Bill O'Brien could hardly be a quality control coach for Bill Belichick's staff at this point. Bill uh, Bill O'Brien, he's a guy, kind of guy that'll trade away his star player and throw in a second round pick just for the hell of it. Okay, he, I don't know why he's still a GM. I really don't. There's no reason he should be a GM. I'm okay with him being the coach, but as a GM, no, cut him. Can't do it. And if it's a package deal, it's better just to let him go altogether. I mean, would it be one of the the best press conferences ever if Bill O'Brien, as the GM, made an announcement to fire himself as the GM? I mean, that would be something I would, you know, pay per view for. If he did that, I would actually respect. <laughs> that might him. flip the book on it. Yeah, I would, flip the book on I would it. actually. That could change like the him. narrative pretty quick there. Oh, here we go, Alex. This is what's going to happen. Bill O'Brien press conference. He announces that. Is a gym, he's firing himself as a head coach, and it becomes a comedy, he becomes likable, he joins Barstool. Okay. <laughs> that's a I mean, I think that's a logical career path for him, and I don't think that's the worst thing that he could do. It's not I mean, he I don't know if he's funny or not, but he's probably better at Barstool than he is at running a I'm gonna take a team. shot in the dark and say no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you at seen least... the way that man looks on on a Sunday afternoon? He's what, got what, the glasses, the, the, the weird butt hat, chin. the butt chin. Oh, he does not. He does not have a lot of positive attributes to him. The only thing that he's got going guy. for him is freaking Deshaun Watson is so good. Poor guy, but, dude. It's oh my gosh, not looking good for him.